to today, and it's one of the great joys I have uh, on Sundays when I come here. He, he's in Illinois, sis, little town called Belleville. And um, so I was talking with him, and we do it every Sunday morning. We, we talk to each other on the phone for about 30 minutes, and, and uh, he told me, he said, a wonderful lady named Dorothy had came to his church, uh, the father's house there in, um, during the pandemic. And she's passing from this life, and they, uh, she requested him to come see her at the hospital. Family did, so he went. And he said he just sang old songs that they both knew, and, and I, I'm aware of that. I've done that before with saints, and even they would wake up and sing with me. It was an amazing thing how our mind works and how we, keep, we hear even after people think we don't. He said uh, he asked her because she had got where she could not talk, he said, Dorothy, do you want anything? And she requested a piece of paper and a pen. She wrote one word, heaven. Just one word, heaven. I want heaven. Amen. No more of this earth. This body is done for this earth. I want heaven. Again, not just living well, but learning to die well. It's a powerful thing. Jesus talked several things. He, he said we were born. Luke chapter 2 talks about the birth of Jesus, talks about Simeon, Anna, and the shepherds, and all those things that take place when he was born. Later, as Jesus began to speak about himself, he said he was sent to this earth. Amen. I was sent here. And then as you study the Word, you'll also realize that not only were we born, not only were we sent, but that God planted us. Amen. Even uses the word seed. So you weren't just, I mean, you got to understand how much God got invested in you to get you here. He didn't just get you birthed here. He didn't just send you here, but he planted you here. And if you are here, you know, I often will wear a long coat. And, you know, I love my six shooters. And, and uh, I have uh, I've ridden horses until the point where I was tired of going to the hospital with them. Amen. And so I, I've got that little cowboy attitude at times. I often felt like I'd have done well in the 1800s, but I also like horsepower, so I like the hot rods I ride, so I'm good for being here in 2022. Can I get an amen? But sometimes you feel like you're born out of season, but it's not so. God put you here at this time for a reason. The book of Acts tells us at, that God planted man. He put us here at just the right time in the right place. So it's not a mistake you're in Crosby, Texas today. Amen. God put you here for a reason. As you walk through the Word of God, you'll understand that the key to productivity Activity is understanding the reason of God. Why? Why was I born? Why was I sent? And why was I planted? As I observe our churches and I observe what God has been doing over the last 19 years and, and through my life for almost 30 years now, next year will be 30 years of full-time pastoring. So that's a, that's a long time. Some of you been, you know, you work businesses that long and you got to retire. <laughs> Ain't happening to this guy. Anyway, in God's hands, we are seed, and the world is his field. So he wants to plant us where we can do the most for him. If you planted me in the wrong place, just to be honest, if you planted me in a big city somewhere, I do not think I could do what I do here. If you planted me somewhere, uh, maybe where the weather wasn't as uh, nice as it is here in South Texas, I may not can do. If you planted me somewhere where the language See, first off, I don't just speak English. I speak country. So you put me in the wrong place, I may not fit. So understand also your environment's important, where God plants you. And again, I believe he planted you here for a reason. Matthew chapter 13, verse 37 says, He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. So when Jesus came, he was sowing good seed. The field is the world. That's why I'm sowing it into the world. And the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. So when you got born again, not only were you born, sent, but you were a seed that was planted. That's why Paul said some men will, water, uh, will plant seed, others will water seed, but God brings the increase. It's all for the glory of God. Amen? So you may not think, well, I haven't won anybody. I, and I pray to God you win somebody to Jesus. You get to witness that moment. But somebody's planted seed, and somebody's watered it. Amen? But God brings forth the increase. Genesis 1.11 tells us the seed is in itself. Then God said, let the seed produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants, and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds, and it was so. Look at it again. It says, uh, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants, and trees on the land that bear fruit 
with seed in it. So every seed that's planted bears forth something that's got seed in it. In other words, if you plant corn, you ain't getting watermelon. You're getting corn. You plant watermelon, get watermelon. Whatever you plant, that's what you're going to get. That's why the Bible tells us about sowing and reaping. My, my money is simply seed. If I plant it properly, it comes back to me. Some folk have never caught that. Amen. They will eat that seed instead of planting that seed. Can I get an amen? So plant that seed where it does the most good, where you can see fertile ground. Now, the seed again is in itself. God planned our lives before the world was ever created. I believe that with all my heart. He thought of you. You were on his mind, and he had to figure out when to get you here and how to get you here. Amen. He chose a womb to do that, and he's aware that we should bring forth fruit. So before a seed germinates, sits in darkness have you ever felt like you were sitting in darkness amen that you were unseen nobody noticed you your hand didn't get shook as much as the one that's always yakking in the church you ever felt that way mistreated hidden away left out but if we stay put and stay faithful in the hard times we will come forth with fruit Amen. But you've got to stay planted. Some folk can't stay planted. Man, they got to run where the excitement is. They got to go where this is happening, that's happening. You can't stay with a job too long, you know. There's something about being planted, being in a, in a place. Did you know I have been in this place here, in this area, since 1986? That's a long time to be in one place. Amen. Now, I run away from here as much as I can. That's not true. I got them grandkids, Pastor David mentioned. I got them grandkids. I got to go see them. But I've been, I've been planning here a long time, so much so I forget all the people I've connected with, the funerals and the weddings and hospitals and things that I've done. Psalm 1, verse 3 says, He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whether he does or whatever he does, prosper. You ever notice something about a tree? It never moves. You ever notice that? It never moves. Unless you uproot it and transplant it somewhere else. And if you keep doing that to the tree, the tree will die. But trees, just, they just stay right there. We, you know, we, we understand trees out at the ranch. we got thousands of them. And, and so I, I understand it. But you've got to settle the issue. If I'm going to bear fruit, I need to stay planted. Amen. I, and I know there are a lot of you watching me. You know why I know you watch me? Because the rain hit about 8 o'clock when you thought you were coming to church and you said to yourself, oh, it's raining. I think I'll stay home and watch Pastor on the, on the live stream today. Glad you are watching. Amen. Please let me know that so I know that you is. All right? So to fulfill the divine God-given call on our life, you've got to understand that God placed you in a certain place. 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, All this comes from the God who settled, which the word there is reconciled, the relationship between us and him, and then called us to settle our relationship with each other. So not only did God tell you to get right with him, he said get right with other people. It's important to stay as right as you can, as much as you can with other people. Reconcile with them, connect with them. God put the world square with himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. I like fresh starts. Amen. Uh, God has given the, us this task by telling everyone what he is doing. The, we're Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. Let me back up. You realize that it's the differences you got with other people that causes you to have attitude? They're not political like you. They're not as churchy like you. Amen. They're not as white like you. Hello. It's our differences. And we'll throw that. We like running with birds of a feather flock together. We like that. But every now and then, uh, you know, a pelican going to run into a whole flock of eagles. And the Bible's telling me, in this scripture right here, for me to learn how to handle those differences and learn how to connect with those differences, amen, and enter into God's work of making things right between them. So we're speaking for Christ himself. Now, before friends with God, he's always a friend with you. Before you ever became his friend, he was your friend. Amen. That's an amazing thing, that God decided to be your friend. 
And then you recognize it, and you became his friend. So how you say in Christ God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong so we could be put right? So everything that happened to make you right, make you righteous, to reconcile you is what Jesus did for us. Amen. Therefore, God not only birthed us, but he sent us and he planted us. That word there is called divine righteousness. It's imputed. Everybody say imputed. In other words, to impute means to attribute to another and ascribe goodness and guiltlessness to someone. I've always been blown away by this, that our righteousness is of God. Uh, people ask me all the time, Pastor, well, you know good. I say only one. The rest of us need a lot of help. Amen. I only know one good. Hallelujah. And I, I mean that. Uh, in, in, our, in our best days, we're a little bit like Jesus. So it's important when I look at Scripture, realize, you know, he made me right. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel good to know that I'm a friend of God. That he looks at me and says, you know what? I like you, man. You know, and sometimes I'll look in the mirror and I'll even say it to myself. I love me. I love me. I'm wild about myself. You know why? Because God's wild about me. Amen. If you're the last one on the earth, he said, I'd have died for you. I'd have done that for you. So righteousness, that right standing with God, therefore being righteous is from God. So when I read this scripture out of Psalm 92 verse 12, remember the righteousness is imputed. You didn't deserve it. You didn't deserve, I don't care how much you gave toward the, uh, a charity. I don't care how much you've done as far as working, helping out in the schools around here. I don't care how much work you did at the county fair to make all the kids feel good about their cows, pigs, and chickens. Amen. I don't care any of that. All them good boy and good girl clubs, uh, that, that's wonderful. But that don't count for righteousness. My righteousness is what Jesus did for me on the cross. His blood covered me, washes away my sins. Amen. Makes me feel good in the morning because I'm one of his kids. Hallelujah. Favor ain't fair, my friend, and God favors those he, that favor him. Can I get an amen? So he said the righteous, those that have been imputed by, because of what Jesus did on the cross, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. Not out in the field, but God said, I'm going to plant them in the house. You ever walk down through a mall and found a tree inside a mall? Isn't that kind of strange? Isn't that different? You know, I, I, I've, I've said this before, but I've taught my boys that if you want this to be your place, your land, you need to mark it. And as country kids, we all knew what marking meant. Now, I may not say this in second service because my mama, she'd be watching. She watches that Facebook thing. But when we were kids, we had the front light on of the house. And me and the boy, me and my brother, one year younger than me, we never liked going to a bathroom simply because we would miss what was on TV. So we would turn the light, porch light out, and mark my mama's roses. She lost all her yellow roses right there. But if you ever saw the porch light go off, you knew one of the Hovatters was marking something. So I taught my boys that, and I know this sounds a little bit vulgar, but it's country. I taught my boys that, and one day we were walking through the mall. We had them one of them trees in the mall, and uh, my son decided, I ain't going to say which one, decided to mark the tree in the mall, and I had to catch him. Now, I found that this thing is, it never stops. Men are just that way, because I got pictures of David's boys doing the very same thing. <laughs> he said, like a tree planted in the house. It's in the house. So everybody that's here that considers this their house, and me their pastor, and Jesus said, Lord, amen, are planted here. You're like a tree planted. That's what he says here. Amen. And when you understand that, he said not just any tree, you're a palm tree. Uh, we were in Florida a couple of years ago with a little payback. I believe in, in paying back that which people have done. And when we hit Hurricane Harvey, people came and helped us and get back on our feet. Imelda, people helped us to get back on our feet. Well, I met a pastor in uh, up in the, the state of Oklahoma who had gone through a hurricane down there. And some of us brothers, we left and we went to Panama City and we helped him restore a building for his church. His name was John Ramsey. He's been behind his pulpit and preached. We poured back into his life, not only monetarily, but with our actions, amen, to go down and help him. We, we're paying it forward because God had blessed us with people that had done things for us. I believe in that with all my heart. I believe you've got to sow it, in, sow it into somebody's life, amen. And it just keeps coming back. It's a, just the right thing to do. We went down there to Florida, and I was blown away. One thing I have uh, 
I haven't really noticed was pine trees. And I'm not, I'm not talking about two or three. I'm talking about thousands of pine trees out in a forest that just stacked with pine trees. When that Hurricane Michael hit at right 200 mile an hour, it snapped those trees off like twigs. Amen. They would just snap, 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 snap. But the one tree that I saw in Florida that was still not giving it up, it was a palm tree. Amen. It was still standing. It was still there. So when I read the scripture here, the, the Bible's always right. Everybody say the Bible's always right. It's always right, man. I mean, uh, thousands and thousands of years. And here it is again. So here's what I realized. You can cut the palm tree, but you can't kill it. God said you, my friend, are like a palm tree. Righteous, because I imputed it to you. Planted in the house of God. We were with Lloyd Barnett the, this week. And Lloyd, again, he's an old friend. Been with me about 12, 15 years. And he did. He face planted, broke almost every bone in his face. Uh, just from his neck up, everything else working good. But I walked in and looked at him, and I saw the cuts on him. And he'd already had a Harley hat on. He said it would cover. But his, his cuts run all the way up in here, and he got staples. And I thought to him, I said, Lloyd, you a palm tree, man. And he grinned. He said, what are you talking about? You, you can cut it, but you can't kill it. Amen. You cut on that thing all day long, but you cannot kill that tree. The minerals and nutrients most trees need to survive are found on the surface just below the bark. So when you cut them, they, they're very shallow and they die. I'm amazed how shallow some people can be. Just a little comment, next thing you know, they're blowing up their Facebook page. Amen. Oh, look what they said about me. Oh, look what they said about my dress. What the, you know, what, don't they know men wear dresses today? <laughs> little pouty, effeminate boys. Amen. And so you'll start picking up stuff real quick, and people get their feelings hurt. They, they get mad. They're shallow. You cut them, and they just whee they're up like the witch on the Wizard of Oz. Because I can't handle it. Listen, if you're dead in Christ, them comments ain't going to shake your life. You got to learn that. You're deeper than that. You're deeper than that. They can cut you, but they can't kill you. Amen. They can't take you out. They may talk about your past, bring up failures you've had. They might have done a little investigative work. Hallelujah. And after that, I want to say it again. They can't kill Your righteousness didn't come from you anyway. Amen. It was the blood of Jesus that saved you, that wrapped you up, that, that makes you righteous in him. So when I read that, I think to myself, it's important. It's life comes from within, so it flourishes even under under attack. Folk can cut you, talk about you, beat you, abuse you, laugh at you, ignore you, exclude you. They can even hate you, not invite you for Christmas. Amen. But they can't kill you. You're not some pansy, weak, wobbled knee, barely getting by, spineless, got no power believer. They can't take your joy. They can't take your peace because their joy, your joy and your peace didn't come from them. Amen. It came from heaven. So even under attack, you can flourish and you can thrive. Cut you. Can't kill you. Hallelujah. The world didn't give this thing to you. The world can't take it away. On, Keep preaching. Thank you, sir. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 says, we got this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God. It ain't from us. I didn't pout, get mad, and quit. Amen. Because the power didn't come from me. It came from him. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, not in despair persecuted but not abandoned struck down not destroyed and and all it, we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body we got this treasure in earthen vessels this earth suit you got amen it's just for earth it's only good for here it is wearing out Amen. There ain't no doubt about it. I had to direct TV people come over because I had a little issue that wasn't working. That's an issue. Because I'm 20 days from college football, and I need that direct TV working. All right. And I had the box go out in my man cave, so I got to get that fixed. So I called him. I said, y'all need to come over. They came over. They said, it's in the line. Well, my big dog, Coda, he, man, he had wallowed out a spot to lay in in the cool of the day. It happened to be right where that line passed and evidently disrupted the line. So the guy said, I'm going to replace it. It's about 90 feet. He said, I'm going to replace the line, but you got to bury it. I mean, what am I paying y'all for? 
So I get out there with a little bitty sharpshooter, and I start digging. And I realize I ain't got it like I used to. I dug about five feet length. I sat down. <sighs> Sweat pouring off me. Friday, 6 o'clock. I dig another 10 feet. I go get me some water. I sit down. And I'm thinking, dear God. And then David calls me. Hey, what you doing? <laughs> Digging a ditch. Want some help? Nah, I don't need no help. I did not say that. <laughs> yeah, come on over. And Mike, I forgot. You loaned us your ditch, witch. I forgot all about that thing. I'm digging manually. Hey, man, I'm too old to be digging manually. Hey, man, so here come that ditch, which and the thing about trees is roots. And them roots will wear you out. Come over, David brought that ditch, which over, and I never felt Jesus so strong in all my life. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. Hey, man, in about two hours, we had that thing done. All I was thinking about is I will see the tide roll here in a couple of weeks. Hey, man, I'm going to be back on that. And I have no idea why I went over on that, but uh, it must be somewhere here in my Bible. Uh, what was it? Squirrel? Y'all quit. Our bodies wear out. When I was in my 30s, I could have dug that ditch. I wouldn't have struggled near as much, wouldn't have sweated near as much. But now it's not like, Chris, it ain't like it was then. Amen. They're wearing out. The palm tree, not only you can cut it, but you can't kill it, but that palm tree will bend, but it won't break. That wind hit 200 mile an hour, them palm trees bowed. What do you do when the winds hit you? You bow. You give God glory. I don't understand why this is happening, but Jesus, I love you. Amen. My strength does not come from me. Amen. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I'm going to bend, and I'm going to bend as long as that wind is blowing. I will bend into the wind. Amen. The tropical winds will blow most trees away, but not the palm tree. The stronger the winds, the, the further it bends, sometimes all the way to the ground. But it ain't dead. Yet when the storm ceases, it straightens up again, and it's actually stronger in the place where it bent. Amen. Where you bent was not a bad thing. Where you bent was your weakest place. Now it's stronger than it's ever been because, church, you didn't give up. Believer, you stayed with it. You didn't quit. You may lose a job, a family member. You may lose some health. Amen. Have your friends leave you, be in debt, may be in Facebook jail, but everyone might be against you. You have no home to stay in. I want to tell you right now, you just bow before the king. That's where your strength comes from. Storms of life will come, but when it's all over, I'm going to be stronger than I first started. Amen. I'm going to start closing up pretty quick because I preached a long time last week, and y'all deserve a rebuttal. A song, a palm tree's depth always exceeds its height. Now, that's the amazing thing. Even out at our ranch, with the thousands of oaks and pines we got, a storm can come up, wet the ground just a little bit. Next thing you know, you got a tree laying on the ground. Them roots go out, but they don't go down. Amen. A palm tree's taproot will go deeper than it is higher. And the longer you in Jesus, and the more you study the Word of God, and the more you pray, and the more you go through the storms of life without, without being a sire puss about it, amen, and you learn how to deal with things as it comes one domino at a time, and you learn how to handle life, your roots are going deeper. Somebody said, why ain't they fell yet? They can't fall. Their roots are too deep. Amen. They're like a tree planted. Their righteousness is of God. It ain't within them. The root of the average tree only goes a few feet underground. The palm trees go down hundreds of feet. It's searching for water. Amen. We just look like we're going down. We're actually going deeper so we can go higher. Psalm 42, 1 says, as the deer pants for water, so my soul thirsts for you. I'm searching for the water, man. The water of the living water of God. If I can drink that, Jesus said, I'll never thirst again. So I'm going to hang out with the water. Let me tell you something. Jesus didn't go to the well, hallelujah, in the place of Samaria looking for water. He went there looking for a woman. Amen. Changed her life. You got to look at it the right way. So you are not shallow. Elder, are you carnal? You think you look good on the outside. The world should see you on the inside. Your foundation is deep. You know God. There's more to us than what meets the eye. There's something about the wisdom that God gives us. The Bible says they grow like the cedars of Lebanon. See, one thing that we do have back home is pine trees. We got them around here. But I'm talking about 
Mm, with them pine trees up there. The sequoias. Uh, no, no, no. I'm even going a little bit different. Them look like Christmas trees. Them blue spruce. That wind will blow through them. I'm heading to Colorado, and that's where I see a lot of those. The wind will blow through them, and you will smell the evergreen. It, it puts off an aroma. See, there's something about Christmas. You ladies, y'all got your little evergreen candles. Huh, Marie? Forty years you've been married to this woman, Robert. God bless you. They'll put that evergreen candle out, light it up, and it smell like Christmas. We always say that because the Christmas tree is always the, a pine tree, a spruce tree, an evergreen to remind us that he is eternal. He's always going to be here. Great size cedar trees. They'll grow like a cedar of Lebanon. It's a symbol of grandeur. When the wind blew, they put off a fragrant scent. Sometimes I'm around people and the winds of life are blowing and they little stinkers. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you don't even want to get in an elevator with them. You little stinker. What you should be is permeating evergreen, eternity. It's all good. Write on a piece of paper, heaven. Just give me heaven. Just wave and worship like a palm tree. You know, God planted you for a purpose who has saved us and called us to a holy life. And again, let me mention your holiness has nothing to do with what you wear. Your holiness has to do with him imputing righteousness to you, making you like him. Not because of anything we've done, see there, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. You know, God said, I'm going to stamp you, Stephanie, with grace before you get here. I'm going to crown you before you show up. Amen. So not only am I going to send you, have you birthed, but Keith, I'm going to plant you. Amen. Like a tree. Remember that. It's three quick, easy points. Believer, you can be cut, but they can't kill you. You go when God says you go. You've been, but you ain't going to break. Your depth goes deeper than your height goes high. So before God said, let there be light, he knew you in his omnipotent mind. He had a reason for you being born in this generation and a place to plant you. You see, church, God did not ask your opinion or permission when he planned and planted you. <laughs> it was his decision. And evidently, God thought, this group of people in this generation can only be reached by this group of people in this generation. So I want to rescue you, save you, plant you so you can reach people in this generation. You, Frank, can reach people I can't reach. Misha, you can reach people I can't reach. So God said, I'm going to plant you in this house and let you start reaching people. You start sowing seed and you start watering. And watch and see what I do. Because you're planted now in the house. God saw what kind of folk it would take to reach the folk here. It takes a unique plant to reach the fruit in this area. I believe the little country church, you were made for this place. I've said this for years. It's even on the board in the back. What we do here matters there. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 9. So we make it our goal to please him whether we are at home in the body or away from it. Ho, ho, ho. Did you catch that? So when I get to heaven, to the kingdom, I'm still going to be pleasing him. If I'm in the body here, I please him. If I'm there, I please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due for the, for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. I know we always read that, it's the bad, it's the bad, it's the bad. Did you know that you've done a lot of good and not one good deed is going to be turned away? Amen. Now, will it balance out? I, I don't know. I don't care. I believe in God for grace. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm believing him to impute that righteousness like he said. So real quickly, the keys to produce, the keys to bring forth fruit, stay where God plants you. Stay. Well, you know what, Pastor, every now and then we ain't got a drummer, and I don't like it. 
Stay where God plants you. Show me your peace. Every night it rains, stay where God plants you. Well, it's hot down. Stay where God plants you. Trust God and obey. Simple, isn't it? Just be obedient. 1 Corinthians 15, 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Papa stole that from Paul. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. You've got to give the glory for every good thing you do to God. Third one, patience and flexibility. Whew. Just be patient. Hupomone, hupomone, we talked about last week, the ability to endure, that's the word patience, and flexibility. Enduring without murmuring or fretting. Also, the act of qual. We ask ourselves, all us guys have went to visit Lloyd at the hospital, and we ask ourselves, how is it this man? Let me just say this. It was years ago, I'm going to say about six, eight years ago, he blew up and got mad. He was upset over something that happened on a motorcycle ride. And it was nobody's fault. It just happened. And he lost his temper, walked out of church for about six, eight months. I'm not saying this to embarrass the man got the sweetest little wife so i'm in the hospital with him this guy and i want to say it's, he's an idiot rode right out in front of him on a bicycle lloyd hits him face plants and, and and listen the only thing lloyd was doing was going to feed his daughter's cat i've told y'all about cats before I've got to tell you again, it ain't worth it, okay? They ain't worth it. And so he, he went over to feed the cat, and on his way back, he got hit, and he hit the ground. So we in the hospital with him. Let's talk about fruit that remains. Let's talk about being planted. He's been back with me about seven, eight years now. But now the wind's blowing. He's cut, but he ain't been killed. Wind hit him. He bent. He didn't bow. His depth, he showed me. He said, Pastor, you know that boy I hit on that bicycle? I said, yeah, I heard about it. He said, broke his leg. I said, it should have. He said, no, no I, I, don't, I don't feel good about it. He said, it busted his bicycle. He said, when I get out of here, I'm going to find him and buy him a new bicycle. Now, I'm embarrassed. Hold on. This bicycle run in front of you. You wrecked that fine-looking Harley. You busted that ugly little face. You got stitches. You've been on a breathing machine when they first put you in here because you had a seizure. And now your thought is, when I get out of here, I need to go buy a bicycle. I, I was rebuked. I sat back and I said, forgive me, Jesus. I ain't practicing what I've been preaching here. You know, I, I, I messed up on this one. I, I'm trying to stand with him. I'm, a, I'm against somebody driving like, when he said that, it just it came over me. What maturity? What growth? What blessing your enemy? Amen. Well, and then he said to me, Pastor, he ain't got nothing. All he had was a bicycle and a little cart he pulled behind him. He said, I, I got a wealth of stuff in a family that loves me. Amen. <sighs> Palm tree living, like a tree planted by the waters. Amen. Puts off its fruit, due season, patience. Amen. That quality, waiting long for justice or expected good without discontent. Okay, I said I was going to close, and I hadn't yet, so I guess I should. Romans 12, 6 says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Wait. Stay planted. Well, I don't know what I'm going to be doing in this church, Pastor. Stay planted till God reveals it. Amen. If necessary, transition. Whatever it is, stay planted. Watch what God does. I'm going to throw Scripture at you that's not on the overhead. Philippians chapter 1, 6. I am certain that God, who began a good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. You stay planted. He ain't finished with us yet. Can I get an amen? Our problems comes because we ain't patient. Amen. Waiting helps develop the character of God in our lives. You weren't just born. 
You weren't just sent. You were planted. Amen. Can't kill you. Only God can take you. Can't break you. You can bend. And your depth will exceed your height. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. Father, I thank you for the people of God here. I thank you for this moment. This, it's a quiet moment in your house. Some people are always looking for a rowdy move and all these. I, I, I'm good with it. I'm good with what you're doing. But I want to say to your people, if this message was for you this morning, would you acknowledge it by lifting your hand? You say, I, this, I got this, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Father, I thank you for the Word of God. I believe there were times you just spoke it and just let it settle in the hearts of your disciples and the people around and let it soak in and just you kept right on moving. So today we're going to do that. Let the Word soak in, Lord. Remind us we can be cut, but we won't be killed. The wind will blow, we'll bend, but we won't break. And Lord, like that palm tree, our depth is going deeper. Today it went a few more inches. Thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Come on. Somebody said, Pastor, there's a short message there today. I said, I know. I'm fixing to leave. Go to Colorado and see grandkids. Yeah, you do it too. You do. Oh, y'all, no, y'all already do it. Y'all don't even show up in here. <laughs> y'all gone. Uh huh. Amen. But either way, uh, I look forward to it. I'm taking my daughter Katie with me. She's the only one that's not made a trip with me out of the five kids of any length. So uh, pray for me. Amen. As I travel, I'm just, uh, I look forward to those. Ha those this, as you get older, I'll say it again. It ain't about you making memories. You're making memories for the people around you. So that when you're gone, they'll remember you. They'll remember what you've done in their life. And that's so, so important. You need to tie their offering envelope. It's in the uh, pew in front of you. You can reach and get that. If you're giving on your phone, go to holywild.net slash give. H-O-L-Y, holywild.net slash give. We thank you for your faithfulness, church. I do. Amen. There are times we look thin. I say, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen this week. And all of a sudden, good things happen. We're trying to help missionaries out and reach out toward other people with other needs. Um, We've got, uh, we're going to, there'll be a little bit of remodeling going on back in the, in the back. Joseph's turning that into uh, also a, a place for youth ministry. Uh, we took the chairs out. We never used them, Ken. Amen. We had an idea to use them, but now they're out on the ranch. You know, we got more porches on that ranch than, and then, uh, 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 the what, sir? Then Carter's got liver pills. All right. Whatever you say there, but, uh, I was going to say his dick has headbands, you know. That was another one I heard all the time. Not in Dick's headband. I thought, what in the world has that got to do with him? That was at the ROC Cola plant, which they have tore down now. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I'd have lost my job 30 years ago if I'd have stayed. Um, <laughs> everybody got your offering on? Where's, where's, my, where's my guys up here to take the offering? Where they at? Travis, happy birthday, sir. Amen. Come on up here. As we give today, we're believing God for Jobs and better jobs. Say it loud. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settled, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. Pastor David, come on up here. Y'all give him a hand as he comes. <laughs>